Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Happy Friday, everyone. You made it to the end of the week. Now it's time for the weekend, so be sure to relax. Um, spend time with friends, spend time with family. Do what you want to do over the weekend because it is the end of the week. Um, today, I thought we would start this series that I've wanted to start for a very long time. I just didn't have the right way of going about it, but um, this series is going to be about watchmaking legends, legends within the watchmaking world, people who have really... Um, stamped the watch uh, making world the watch world with um, true uh, innovation people who have really changed the way in which we think about watches um, and um, why not start with the absolute legend himself uh, Abraham Louis uh, Breguet um, this um, Breguet is a horolo horologist from Neuchâtel um, who has been credited with um, creating the first wrist wristwatch ever? I thought it would be a, it would be a great way of kicking off this series, where you can learn about uh, people who have really been influential within the watchmaking world. Um, so, if you have some suggestions on people you want me to cover, be sure to put it in the comment section below. While you're looking at the comment section, be sure to hit that thumbs up button for us. For us, it really does help us out. And hit the subscribe button if you're new to watches. If you like watches, we like watches. We create videos about watches. So it's a perfect match. Um, so getting into um, Breguet, as I said, he was a horologist from the Neuchâtel area. At the time, Neuchâtel was still part of Prussia. It actually wasn't part of Switzerland. So he is actually Prussian. Um, I guess that could be a completely different conversation, whether he's Swiss or Prussian or French or whatever you want to say. But um, he's from uh, Neuchâtel and he was credited with creating the first wristwatch ever for uh, uh, Caroline Morat, who was the Queen of uh, Naples. This occurred in 1810. There is some controversy around the actual first wristwatch created ever, but um, he has been um, within that conversation. Um, going a little bit back in time to uh, in, in Breguet's uh, life, he was born on the 10th of January in 1747. Um, Unfortunately, his father passed away early on in his life. I believe he was 10 years old when his, his father passed away. But his, his mother ended up remarrying and ended up remarrying a person who was a watchmaker. Um, his family had a line of watchmakers um, in it, so his stepdad was a watchmaker. At first, um, his, his stepdad tried to get him involved within the, um, within the hobby of water, within the world of watchmaking, but he really didn't show much interest. But then eventually, Kind of as time went on, he took an interest in his stepfather's work. Um, within what kind of stemmed from that interest was he actually ended up becoming an apprentice uh, to Versailles watchmaker, to a Versailles-based watch uh, watchmaker. Um, at the time, the courts had a lot of control over the trades, so that's why he was associated with the Versailles watchmaker. Um, his master um, actually there isn't much history about who the master was, who he kind of learned under, but um, what was documented was that his master saw that Breguet had um, immense talent and ability in the crafts, the craftsmanship of watchmaking. Um, so he suggested to Breguet to start taking classes in things like mathematics. So Breguet started taking classes um, under a teacher, uh, Abbe Marie, and um, Abbe Marie ended up becoming a friend and mentor to Breguet. Um, I think this is a testament to what your friends and connections can do for you. Um, his mentor ended up introducing him to King Louis XVI of France, which I think was the way in which Breguet started stemming out into providing watches for the immense clientele that Breguet ended up having in um, names like royal families. Um, so this was kind of like a stepping stone and almost a, a must for the the future of Breguet's career. Um, after um, finishing his apprenticeship um, under the uh, Versailles Master Watchmaker, uh, he ended up marrying and he started his own watch company, which is exactly what Breguet currently is. Um, soon after creating his company, he started working on escapements, which is kind of his bread and butter. Um, the escapements that he kind of worked on were things like the tourbillon, the automatic winding mechanism, and also an overcoil, which basically allowed for the um, the coil of the mainspring to um, be run a little bit more accurately. Um, with all these advancements that he started um, having, um, he was actually commissioned by a lot of royal families, some of which were from France, from England, um, and obviously uh, the Queen of Naples in 1810, where he created the first wristwatch. But he worked on a lot of other um, 
other pieces for these royal families, which I think, again, stemmed from the fact that he had a connection in his mentor from when he was taking classes at school. Um, when um, him and his wife ended up having a son and his son was kind of brought into um, Breguet's watch company. <clears throat> and when Breguet died in 1823, um, his son ended up taking, up, taking over Breguet as the master watchmaker. Um, Breguet died in Paris, France, but his kind of legacy has lived on to this day in the watch company that we all know and love, the, uh, which is uh, Breguet. So an extremely, um, an extremely um, successful career. I read some things about uh, Breguet. He was actually into astronomy, so he actually worked on a lot of astronomical clocks as well as um, you know time clocks. So um, definitely was an extremely talented watchmaker and being connected with so many royal families, I think is a testament to the fact that he simply was one of the best watchmakers to ever live. I know the, uh, the whole first wrist watch uh, creation is something that you probably will dispute. I believe um, Queen Victoria the first or one of the, the English queens um, had a watch commission for her to be produced um, in the, I want to say 1570s. I want to say around that time, I might be wrong. Um, but uh, we, we, we don't know if that's the case. Unfortunately, this first wristwatch is actually unknown. We don't know where it is. There's no history or there's no uh, record of where this watch could possibly be. There was a watch that recently came out um, within the last five or 10 years uh, from uh, Priguet that are in the uh, shape and uh, style of the watch that Priguet ended up creating for the Queen of Naples. I'll put a bunch of pictures in this video so you can see kind of the inspiration that Priguet had for creating this watch. Obviously, there's probably a little, some more diamonds, but I know that Priguet has extracts from their archives and records to show that this was actually created in 1810. So um, I can't put any pictures of what it, what it actually is. Perhaps I could find some, but I'll be sure to put up pictures of the modern version of it so that you can at least see what Priguet was thinking about creating and what the Queen of Naples clearly loved. I believe she had Priguet, uh, she commissioned Priguet to create something like 32 watches for her. So obviously was extremely happy with the work that uh, Abraham Louis Priguet ended up uh, creating for, it, for her. So um, that's one of the watchmaking legends. I hope this is the first, this is obviously the first of many to come. Uh, Priguet is a good place to start and obviously somewhere where we can go. If there are legends that you, would like me to discuss in the future videos, be sure to put it in the comment section below so we can make sure we cover all of the people who should get recognition for the amazing work that they have done within watch uh, making, which has basically led to us being so interested in watches and falling in love with, with these pieces. So put those in the comment section below. And if you've made it this far and you haven't already, be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button and the thumbs up button. The thumbs up button really does help us out. Um, show some love for the Life on the Wrist family. Um, also, if you don't know, we're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, all of all of this, our social medias are just at Life on the Wrist, so be sure to check us out there. Um, I try to post as daily as possible on Instagram, so be sure to check that out. Um, also, if you haven't seen the videos from this past week, the Wednesday's, Wednesday's episode of Life on the Wrist, we talked about the most expensive wristwatch to sell ever, which occurred last weekend. I'll give you a little hint, it was 31 million Swiss francs but go back to our previous video to see which watch that was. And on Monday, uh, what do we do on Monday? Oh, we discussed, um, we started a series where we, we will be talking about learning about vintage watches, where we are going to help you get a basic foundation for, um, for terms and being able to talk to, about vintage watches. So uh, be sure to check out that series as well. Um, I want to thank you all for watching this episode. I, I, have done this a lot recently, but we've seen some tremendous uh, support from all of you and our YouTube channel has become an extremely fun part of, 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 of life, running life on the wrist. Um, so uh, thank you so much for your support. It really does help us um, kind of motivate us to continue to make these videos. If we're helping you um, just have a little bit of fun within the week, um, when we talk about watches, it, it, it really does um, help us out. So. Any, any support that you have by leaving comments or hitting the like button really kind of just continues to motivate us. And um, we've had fun so far this this year. You know, we've 
we've really focused on uploading videos this past year and it's been great success so we hope to continue next year um so thank you for that um if you don't know we also run a vintage watch shop um link will be in the bio or link not in the bio in the description um so be sure to check out our shop we have a Gerard Perrigo Seahawk there so if you're interested in that uh definitely check it out if you aren't check it out either way it's a it's an absolutely beautiful vintage piece and with that said guys I hope you enjoyed this video and until